Great. Now, ladies and gentlemen, listen and listen and listen and listen to me very well. Listen and listen and listen to me very well. When we talk of a group cash flow statement, I told you that uh, this group cash flow statement, you must always present it in the form of how many sections? It must be having how many sections? It must be having how many sections? Three. The first one is operating, isn't it? The second one is what year somebody? Investing. The third one is what year? Financing. Thank you very much. So we have operating. So we have here operating, the three sections. Operating activities. Operating activities. We have investing activities. Investing activities. Investing activities. And then lastly, we have financing activities. Lastly, we have financing activities. If I remember very well, I also told you that this particular group cash flow statement can be prepared in any of the two ways that we learned in our last class. There are two approaches you can use. Two approaches you can use. One approach is called what your direct method. The other approach is called that indirect method. So if we go to an exam and the examiner is silent, if we go to an exam and the examiner is silent, I shall always use indirect. Indirect is straightforward. But there are times when the examiner, like there is one time he insisted for CPA section six advanced financial reporting students to use direct method. Very few students in Kenya were able to capture that question using direct method. However, even if the examiner tells you to use direct method, and then it happens that, it happens that you only know indirect method, you will still end up, you will still end up getting a few marks correctly. Why? Because these two sections, it doesn't matter the method you use. It doesn't matter the method you use. These two sections, ladies and gentlemen, will always be the same. The only section which is different between the two methods is how you get the operating activities cash flow. So now today, I would want to use very few minutes, by the way, to teach you how to get cash flow from operating activities using the direct method. Using the direct method, I love it so much, many people hate it. I love it, and you're going to love it too. So direct method, so mention there, direct method, dash, direct method, dash, direct method, dash, group cash flow statement. Direct method, dash, group cash flow statement. I love it. So ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to direct method, I'll give you a proforma statement. I will give you a proforma statement. The proforma statement, ladies and gentlemen, will go like this, will go like this. This is how my proforma statement will look like when it is direct method. When it is direct method, this is how my proforma statement will look like. So in this case here, we shall look at the operating activities. So operating activities, what do we have? Number one, we are going to mention here cash received. Cash received from customers. Cash received from customers. This is a very important component. Cash received from customers. Cash received from customers. Cash received from customers. That's a very important component. Cash received from customers, very important component. And then we have, in this case here, cash paid to our suppliers. Cash paid to suppliers, to suppliers. And then lastly, we have a cash paid to employees, paid to employees and the providers and the providers, providers of other services, 
providers of other services. Those three. And then we shall get in this case here our total cash flow, cash flow from operating, from operating activities, from operating activities of which will come under less the tax paid. We less the tax paid, we less the tax paid out of uh, this subtraction. The net amount we shall get, we shall call it a net cash flow, net cash flow from operating activities, which in this case here we shall transfer to this other column. Remember here we have shillings, here we have shillings. So the net cash flow from operating activities, we shall take here. And then, ladies and gentlemen, remember, after we get this, now we shall endeavor, we shall straight away go to the indirect, or rather, uh, this other format, which of course will be exactly a replica of what we did in the indirect method, in the indirect method. So please, once you copy up to here, put thumbs up, tell me we are ready to start the question now. Tell me we are ready to start the question. Tell me we are ready to start the question. This is just a, a performer ready. Great. Abel, I'm so happy to see you making a comment there. You came in with a lot of fear. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So give me just a minute. Give me a minute. I come back.
Okay, now we are ready. Now we can continue. Great. Great. Now, ladies and gentlemen, remember that this really is a very straightforward thing. Can somebody guide me? I would want to work with the first item here. Cash received from our customers. Cash received from our customers. Which account do you think am I going to work with to be able to derive this figure of cash we are going to receive from our customers? Direct method. Which account do you think is very important to me? Debtors, I like that. The debtors or the receivables, isn't it? Debtors or the receivables. We call it a receivables account. So you guys are right. So the first thing that I need to do is to come and mention here, receivables account. If I like the T, I know you guys love the T account so much. Love the T account so much. Love the T account so much. So I have here my receivables receivables so receivables we have here the balance brought down balance brought down of receivables from the statement of financial position given are you guys able to see the balance that was brought down balance brought down of receivables from 2016 to 2017 are you able to see the balance brought down of receivables and the current assets 3120 isn't it 3120. Thank you so much. So we have here 3120. How about balance carried down? How about balance carried down? Ah, again, 3120. You guys are bright. 3120, you guys are bright. So we have here 3124. Yes, both of them. Now, so we have receivables at the beginning, receivables at the end. What normally makes our receivable account? change in between in between what will make right our receivables here keep on fluctuating in between what really will influence our receivables right i like what scholastica is sales credit sales yes when we have credit sales what happens will debit uh, the receivables we credit the sales account. At your level, mostly the sales you will be given, nobody will tell you whether it was there, uh, whether it was a cash or credit. We always assume that uh, whatever sales is given here is credit. Is credit. Is credit. Thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, in this case here, we have what here? We have a sales decreasing my receivables. Credit sales, let me be very specific. Credit sales. So is there somebody who is able to see credit sales in this particular financial statement? Yes, I can see the statement of comprehensive income. Yes, and I can see my sales. I can see my revenue was 30 what year? 3075. Was 3075. 3075. Yes, I can see a very good student who is telling me, Mwalimu, you know what? Bad debts will reduce the receivables. Yes. If they are there, I'll have to come and credit this account with bad debts. But in this question, I don't have them. The only thing that I need to come and do here is to remember the subsidiary we disposed. Disposed. Subsidiary. So disposed subsidiary. Disposed subsidiary had some receivables, remember. This will reduce our receivable. This will reduce our receivable. So the disposed subsidiary from note number three, are you able to see the receivables there? Disposed subsidiary, are you able to see the receivables there? 135, 135, 135. So ladies and gentlemen, if there are no many transactions affecting our receivables account, yes. If there are no many transactions affecting our receivables account, come and close this account. Close it up, close it up, close it up, close it up. Close this account and tell me which side is heavier. 
which side, of course, this side. So in this case here, how much should I book in here? How much should I book in here? This stands for disposed subsidiary, receivable of disposed subsidiary. So this is 61.95, this is 61.95. So could you kindly then subtract these two from this? Take 61.95 minus 31.20 minus 135 to get the balancing figure. To get the balancing figure, to get the balancing figure, what do we have there, somebody? Yeah. 29.40, right? So this 29.40 is the balancing figure. So in this case here, what name do we give to this 29.40? What name do we give to this 29.40? What name do we give to this 29.40? This must be the cash that we received from our customers, isn't it? Isn't it? Cash received from customers. Cash receipts received from customers. So this must be what we shall take to our bank as cash received from customers. It is what we shall take to our operating activities under cash received from customers. So cash received from customers is 2940 is 2940 is 2940 great so i hope you guys have been able to follow up to there i hope you guys have been able to follow this up to there yes now the next thing then will be you have received money from your debtors you also need to pay your creditors you need in this case here to make payments here. So in this case here, could you kindly go ahead and uh, give us the cash paid to your suppliers? Cash paid to suppliers. If you allow me, I'll grab this. Cash paid to suppliers. Right? It's our working. Once we finish our working, we are taking these figures to the performer that we drew earlier on. Eh? Right? So these are working for me. Cash in this case here, paid to suppliers. So the cash paid to suppliers, ladies and gentlemen, in this case here will affect which account will it affect? Which account shall we use for us to be able to get this cash that we pay to our suppliers? Which account shall we use? Which account shall we use? Payables, you guys are geniuses. Payables, yes. Payables, 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 yes. So in this case here, come and give us a payables account. Remember payables account, uh, thank you very much payables. So come and give us, come and give us. And I would want us from today, we should stop using those words, debtors and creditors. The standards, don't allow those terms anymore. Payables, receivables. When we go to interviews, senior interviews of CFOs, would want people who are using a current financial reporting terms. All right, so in this case here, because it's a liability uh, brought down comes on the credit side. So is there somebody who is able to see the brought down payables? Brought down payables, the 2016 payables, end of 2016 payables, is there somebody who is able to see those figures? So payables, somebody is telling me payables. Payables, when you look at uh, the liabilities current, payables, we have 1785, thank you so much, 1785. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we have carried down. So carried down, carried down. Are you able to see the carried down for 2017 now? Payables for 2017 carried down, 29.55, 29.55. I know that in between the year, we disposed a subsidiary. So we expect the payables to go down because this subsidiary that we sold went away with some payables. So again here, payables of disposed subsidiary. Payables. Please never forget this. Payables of payables of uh, of the disposed subsidiary. Are you able to see the payables of the uh, of the uh, disposed subsidiary? So of course, when this account reduces with debit, right? With debit, when it increases with credit. So Odinga Eric is giving me a figure of five hundred. And 40, like that, 540. From note number three, from note number three, we can see that uh, the subsidiary that is supposed here had payables of 500 what year? Of 540, like that. 
what else should I bring here, my great students here? Some of you are young to be my daughters and my sons. What else should I bring to this account? What else should you bring to this account? Cost of sales, quite a good trial, but no. No. Yes, credit purchases. So we shall bring purchases here. And by the way, the purchases. Purchases, of course, will increase my payables when they are credit. So bring purchases here. Bring purchases here. But I like what Irene spoke about. Irene has got an idea that uh, for us to get these purchases, we need to use the cost of sales. Irene has an idea. We must use cost of sales. We must use cost of sales somewhere. Now, I would want a good student to remind Mualimu here the formula of getting a cost of sales. When they want us to give them cost of sales, normally what do we do? When they want us to give them cost of sales, what do we normally do? When they want us to give them cost of sales in the income statement, opening plus purchases minus closing stock. So we have opening a stock, inventory that is, plus purchases minus closing inventory. You guys are geniuses. You guys are very bright. So could you kindly then make purchases the subject of the formula? After you write this, please make purchases the subject of the formula. 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 I would want to see whether there's somebody who is picking something very nice here. Make purchases the subject of the formula. Make purchases the subject. I want it to be left on one side of the equation. On one side of the equation. I want it to be left on one side of the equation. Nobody is talking to me. 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 It is cost of sales. Ah. Oh, maybe Mutunga, you are not able to get a minus there, right? <laughs> so if I leave this purchase, say, on this side, then I can see closing stock uh, crossing over. It becomes positive. So closing will become positive, opening will be subtracted. Thank you so much. So they are telling me that Mualimu purchases here, purchases, purchases, purchases will be cost of sales plus closing minus opening. But again, remember that opening, opening in this case here, opening, ladies and gentlemen, we must always put opening in brackets. Always, whenever you see opening, you must always put opening in brackets. Great. So then I would want us to look for cost of sales in this question. Cost of sales in this question. Is there somebody who can see cost of sales in this question from the income statement? From the income statement, is there somebody who can see cost of sales from the income statement? Yeah, Irene says, 14, thank you very much. From the income statement, cost of sales is 1470. But now remember that this cost of sales must be adjusted. There are two things that we normally take to the cost of sales, which are non-monetary, which must always be removed here. Non-monetary depreciation. Depreciation normally goes to cost of sales. I need to subtract it because really I would want cash payments. So I want us to subtract depreciation. From note number one, is there somebody who can see the depreciation here? From note number one, is there somebody who can see the depreciation? Depreciation, note number one, which I've told you was included. 
depreciation. Even if you're not told, that I mean depreciation in most cases will go to cost of sales. So note number one, during the year, and at the first October 2017, depreciation of shillings 240 million was charged in relation to property, plant, and equipment. So it must have been stored here. It must have been put in the bucket of cost of sales. So come and subtract what here, somebody? Come and subtract 240 there. And then you say minus. The other thing which will be going to our cost of sales will be the profit or loss, right? Especially loss, loss on disposal of assets, loss on disposal of assets, like in note number two, note number two, an item of property with a carrying value of 885 million was disposed of during the year and at 31st October 2017 for 750 million in cash. The loss on disposal is part of the cost of sales. So I need to get this loss on disposal. Jackie tells me it is 135. Don't even calculate it. Jackie tells me that uh, that loss which was expensed here is 135. Don't even calculate it. However, in the interest of the students who have just joined us, if I'm to do a disposals account, just a small account here called disposals account, so this disposal account, like they're telling us an item of property, plant, and equipment whose carrying value was 885 was disposed. When you disposed, dispose a PPE, what happens? You go to the PPE account and the credit with the disposed assets carrying value, carrying value, you credit. And then this carrying value that you've removed from the PPE, you take it the disposal account and the debit there. So we have here PPE. So we have here PPE disposed over the carrying value is 885. So it's about disposal, the asset has gone, money has come in. When this money comes in, you receive it, you debit in this case here the bank account, and then you credit the disposals account. So you're told here that this asset fetched 715 million in cash. So we have here bank. We are creating this account with 750 like that. And then now we balance. So when we balance, the debit side is bigger. The debit side is bigger. So you can see straight away that there is what here? A 135. And this, of course, when it comes to the credit side, it must be a loss on disposal. It must be a loss on disposal. Why a loss? Because I'm creating this account and then I debit my income statement. So when we got this loss, we are being told here, yeah, what do we do with it? We went ahead and expensed it in the cost of sale. We included this as a cost in the cost of sales. We included this, not number two, an item of property with a carrying value of 85 million was disposed of during the year, ended the 1st October 2017 for shilling 750 million in cash. The loss on disposal, is part of the cost of sales. So in this case here, then I need to come here and do what here, remove it. Plus, plus, is there somebody who is able to see the closing inventory? Closing inventory. Remember, this is closing inventory. Is there somebody who can see the closing inventory in this question? Is there somebody who can see the close? They're not talking to me at all. Is there somebody who can see the closing inventory in this question, really? Right? They're telling me it's 3,900. It's only one student who has answered that. The closing inventory is 3,900, is 3,900. So please, you can write this in full so you avoid confusing. These are inventories. So closing inventory is 3,900 minus the opening inventory. Opening inventory, are you able to see the opening inventory under current assets? Are you able to see the current, right? 39, isn't it? So this 3090, remember, remember, or rather even before I continue, why am I putting uh, opening uh, inventory in brackets? There is something that is very important with this opening. There is something which is very important. There is something which is very important with this opening inventory, something very important. Thank you very much, Medua, for raising it. Yes, so that we can adjust it to againest the inventory of the subsidiary that was disposed. Inventory of the subsidiary which was disposed. So inventory of the sub that was disposed is how much? 
is 90. So of course, because the disposed subsidiary, I'll come here and subtract. If we acquired the subsidiary, I would have added. So these are crazy arithmetic. Well, let me see whether there is anybody who will be able to get these purchases correctly. Let me see whether there is anybody who will be able to get these purchases correctly. So using your brackets, calculator very well. Open brackets here, 1470 minus 240 minus 135 plus 3900 minus, open brackets here, 3090 minus 90, you close. You say equals. What are you getting there? Eighteen fifteen. Please, I'm so sure somebody here has not used their brackets very well. I'm so sure that some of us haven't used their brackets very well. Please ensure you're using your brackets very well. Open brackets, this minus that, minus that, close. Plus that 900 minus open brackets. There's an opening bracket here. It's at 990 minus 90, you close. So they're telling me that this is supposed to be 1995. I'm so sure in this room, there must be somebody who was born in 1995. I'm 100% sure of that. 1995. This must be a bad year for somebody here. Thank you so much. Now that you have finished working on this account, could you kindly come here and do balancing here? Do your balancing. Do your balancing. Can I rub this if you don't mind? Can I rub this? Can I rub this? This down here. Silence means consent. Silence means consent. So that is consent for me. So I can come here and rub this. I can come here and rub this. Thank you so much. So Jackie is telling me that I should come and have this balancing at 37, 37, 37, 37 something. Please give me this figure here. 37 what? Give me this figure. 37, 80. So 37, 80, 37, 80. So the balancing figure I'm being told by Eric Odinga is 285. So of course, this is the bank. As cash paid to suppliers. Cash paid to suppliers. Cash paid to suppliers is 285. You have to write this in full for your case. Cash paid to suppliers is 285. 285, 285. So please, if you have a highlighter, could you kindly highlight this? I used to like yellow highlighter so much, but nowadays I'm told that yellow is political. I don't want to take sides at all. I'm a very neutral person, very neutral person. I always listen to all of them. So if you have a card of a highlighter you'd want to use, please highlight bank as cash, which was paid to you to suppliers. Now then we have the last thing, the last thing that we need to do, ladies and gentlemen, and this one, you don't have to open any account. This one, you don't have to open any account. You don't have to open any account now here. What you need to do, simply come here, ladies and gentlemen, and they give me some title there about cash paid to employees and uh, providers providers of other services and of course facilities things like rent etc right so cash paid to employees and what here providers of other services stroke facilities so here basically what are we looking at there is really nothing much here here ladies and gentlemen when i look at uh, my expenses in the income statement, I'm looking at two expenses. I'm looking at distribution cost, distribution cost, distribution cost of how much? 240, 
Then I have administrative expenses. So admin expenses. Admin expenses of how much? Of 480. These admin expenses, you have to be very careful. For admin expenses, remember, we normally charge impairment of goodwill. Impairment of goodwill normally goes to where? Administration expenses. So if you're told that there is an impairment, you must always subtract the impairment of goodwill from the admin expenses. In this question, we checked, tested it for impairment. There wasn't any impairment. We did not have any impairment. We never had any impairment. We never had any impairment. So the impairment is what here? Zero. And please, for you to be able to see how we check this impairment to be zero, and ensure that you watch this video. I would want to know whether whether, whether, whether Steve, you're able to get that video. Are you able to get that video, Steve? Have you shared it in the group, Steve? There is a video which is very important. I'm not going to repeat this thing really, right? Right? Eric wants me to explain. I'm not ready to do that today because I would want everybody, first of all, to watch that. It's a self-explanatory video. If you're not be able to understand it by tomorrow, then straight away I'll be able to repeat. For now, if I were you, I would have simply written here in some different color that administration cost, always less what here, yeah, less. Yes, you have to duct it, yes. You less what here, yeah, impair, impairment. So this is 400 what here, yeah, 80, 480. So could you kindly give me this total? Remember in some questions, they will give you what you call other payables. They will give you what you call other payables. How I wish I had other payables. So like Eric is telling me this is 720. If I had an other payables, you see other payables falls where? Other payables are not in the trade payables. Other payables normally come here. If I had an account called other payables, other payables, this is what I would have done. I would have come here and created other payables, brought down, put a figure there, cut it down, put a figure here. And then whatever figure that I have here, I bring it here, 720. And then I'll be able to get the balancing figure. So here yeah, I've got nothing here, nothing here. So this 720 automatically is the cash paid to employees and providers of other services. Cash paid to employees and providers of other services is 700 what year? 20. And that is it. So please write a summary for us there. Write a summary for us there. Mention operating activities. The first one is cash received from customers. And then we have here cash paid, cash paid to suppliers, cash paid to suppliers. So cash paid to suppliers, you guys had given me a figure of two, was it 285? Please remind me, was it 285? Cash paid to suppliers, was it 285? Yes. And then of, of course, this one we are subtracting. And then we have here cash paid, cash paid to who? Cash paid, cash paid to who? Cash paid to who? To employees. We just leave it there. But I know that in terms of admin, we normally put rent, it is very many things there. Very many things there. That's why we are calling it in full, cash paid to employees and providers of what here are other services and providers of other services, which you guys have given me a figure of what here, 720 like that. So please you subtract there, please you subtract there, and then we'll be able to give us the total cash flow from operating activities, Total cash flow from operating activities. Total cash flow from operating activities. Total cash flow from operating activities, 1935, 1935. And then we shall come and less what here? We less the tax paid. The tax paid. So tax paid, at the end of the day, tax paid, we had already calculated this tax paid, if you remember. We had calculated tax paid, if you remember, it is three. Tax paid is three. Tax paid is three. So when you subtract like that, then you should be able to get a net cash flow, cash flow from operating activities. 
from operating activity. So 1932 minus three, 1935, I mean, minus three gives me 1932, 1932, 1932, 1932. So of course we have shilling millions here and shillings millions there, like that, 1932. So is this figure familiar? Is this figure familiar? 1932 figure, is it familiar? Is it familiar? Great, 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 great. Very familiar, great, great, great. Yeah. Great, thank you very much. I'll work hard, Eric, to reach there. <laughs> so please, one thing, don't forget, don't forget to watch that video on YouTube. Problem with my students here, whenever they watch my YouTube videos, they forget to like, they forget to comment. They also don't do what here, they also don't uh, do what here, they also don't subscribe. So when I send something nice there, they are not able to watch. So like now I expect my students here to do what here, to watch this, to watch this, to watch this and subscribe. Great.